Hey, Chuki here from SurgeonInScholar.com and in this video, you will learn all about the Form I-20 given to F1 Visa International students. We will be discussing what it is and what it's used for, how you can get one, and what's contained in the document. Coming right up. In simple terms, the Form I-20 is a three-page document given to non-immigrants who intend to study in the United States. This document can only be issued by schools that are certified by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, specifically the Students and Exchange Visitor Program, SEVP. Now, while the majority of non-immigrants who receive the I-20 are on an F-1 visa engaging in an academic program of study, the I-20 is also given to non-immigrants who plan to enter the U.S. on an M-1 visa to pursue non-academic or vocational programs of study. The ultimate use of the Form I-20 is to apply for an F-1 or M-1 visa and to seek entry into the U.S on these visa classes. However, the Form I-20 also serves several other purposes as will be discussed later in this video. So how exactly do you get the Form I-20? Getting the Form I-20 is generally a two-step process. The first step is getting accepted into a school certified by SEVP and this school could be a university, a college, or even a primary or secondary school. The second step is providing evidence of financial support as requested by your school's designated school official DSO for short. This proof of financial support must include funds covering tuition fees and living expenses for one academic year of study. International students who intend to bring their dependents to the U.S., such as a spouse, a child, or children, must also obtain a Form I-20 for each dependent. Thus, you must also show evidence of financial support covering the living expenses for each dependent as specified by your school's designated school official. The evidence of financial support you provide to get the Form I-20 could be in the form of bank statements showing personal savings or family savings. It could also be in the form of an award letter offering you a scholarship, a fellowship, or an assistantship by your university or your school, and could also be a letter of sponsorship from a government, an organization, or a company. So what else is the Form I-20 used for? Other than the primary purpose of applying for an F-1 or M-1 visa and seeking entry into the U.S. on these visa classes, the Form I-20 is needed for other purposes such as applying for a U.S. Social Security number, applying for a U.S. State Driver's License, applying for a U.S. State Identification Card, changing your immigrant status from the F-1 status to another status while in the U.S., and serves as a proof of work authorization. So now let's take a close look at each section of the Form I-20. At the top left corner of page 1 is the service ID number. This number always starts with the letter N. The first box contains your biographical information, your admission number, and your admission class. This first box also contains the reason for issuing the form. When you first receive an I-20 from your school's DSO, the form issue reason will be listed as initial attendance, and after you've enrolled in your program of study, you will be given a new Form I-20 that states continued attendance as the form issue reason. The second box on page 1 is the school information. Here you would find the name of your DSO as mentioned earlier. This person would be your main point of contact when seeking to enter the US as discussed in the video linked above. So keep a note of their contact information before traveling to the US. The third box box on page 1 contains information about your program of study. Very important to take note of is the program start and end date. You are only allowed to enter the US on an F-1 visa within 30 days of your start date. Note that the end of your F-1 status does not depend on the expiration date of your F-1 visa but on the end date shown on your current Form I-20. You can watch a video linked above and also in the description section below where I talk about the difference between the period of validity of your F-1 visa and your legal authorized stay in the US. The fourth box on page 1 summarizes your financial responsibility. You should have evidence of financial support covering the total amount in this box when applying for an F-1 visa and seeking entry into the US on an F-1 visa. The fifth box is a remarks section where your DSO would make any appropriate comments about your I-20 at any point in the future. The sixth box on page 1 would have the signature of your DSO certifying that you've provided correct information and indeed meet the qualification to attend the school to pursue a full program of study. The seventh and last box on page 1 is for you to sign and date. If you are under the age of 18, this box should also be signed and dated by a parent or a legal guardian accordingly. The first and second boxes on page 2 are relevant to your authorization 
education for off-campus employment, such as curricular practical training, CPT, and optional practical training, OPT. As an active F1 student, you become eligible to use CPT or OPT after completing one academic year of studies. You may not engage in any kind of work off campus without receiving this work authorization from your DSO. You can learn more about CPT and OPT on this channel, links in the description section below. The change of status slash cap gap extension box is applicable to F1 students changing into another non-immigrant visa class, such as going from an F1 student visa class to an H-1B worker class. F1 students who wish to take a part-time course load would need to obtain permission from the DSO. This approval for a reduced course load would be added to the fourth box on page two. Finally is the travel endorsement box, which is yet another important section of the I-20. Once you enroll as an F1 student and receive an I-20 for continued attendance, a valid travel signature from your DSO will be required to re-enter the U.S. after a brief departure from the U.S. The third page is the instruction section, which contains very important information for you, the student signing this document, and the DSO issuing and signing the Form I-20. Make sure to read and understand this page in its entirety. Your I-20 is an important immigration document that you will need for several years while in the U.S., so ensure to keep this safe at all times. I hope you found this video quite informative. Get at me in the comment section below if you have any questions questions about the I-20. Please like and share this video as it helps other viewers who may find this information helpful. And if you're meeting for the first time, make sure to subscribe to the channel to catch up with more high value content coming your way. For more helpful resources, check out our website at surgeoninscholar.com. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one. But until then, be unbounded.